Happy Easter. Today, today we're going to talk about food and why I talk about it so much in these videos um, based on a couple questions. Also, how to find an apartment. We're going to hit some key points that you should know when you're looking for a place to live. So we're going to get to that, but first I want to mention the Patreon video. I did a Patreon video for April. It's uploaded and I'm mentioning it here because um, I want to make sure the Patreon viewers know about it and know where to go and look because it's actually a secured video. <clears throat> the video is the longest I've ever made. <laughs> it's about 40 minutes long and it was the process I went through on why I was leaving the USA and how I made my choices. And while it's a 40 minute video, I cut it as short as I could. So um, I hope that's what you're looking for. I received a couple questions and I've kind of combined them. Why, why don't you do more indigenous food? Why don't you do um, more cooking demonstrations? And I, I do these videos based on what my life is and I don't generally go out of the norm. What you're seeing is what I go through, places I go or places that I would go anyway. And so that's what these videos are. I don't really stage and do a lot of prop. I, I take some notes before I start uh, just because as you know I ramble too much. So I combined a couple questions about food and why I talk about it so much in my videos. Well, I don't really talk about it so much, I don't think. However, food is a huge part of our life, right? And if you're like me, you're going to eat once, maybe twice a day. If you're like a normal person, you're going to eat three or four times a day. And some people do those little munchy things and eat five or six times a day. Well, that makes up a lot of your life going shopping, choosing food, um, preparing food, cooking food, finding a good restaurant. That's a lot of your life. And if I'm doing videos about what I'm doing every day, well, I'm eating every day. And when you're in a place that you're not familiar with, then you have to hunt for the things that you in particular will like. So if I'm in Rochester, New York, I lived there for many years and I know the places that, hey, if I want this, I go there. If I want that, I go there. You know, I know to go for Texas hots or garbage plates or where to get barbecue or where to get a really good steak dinner. I already know that. When you go to a new place, be it in Ecuador or be it in anywhere, you have to build that knowledge base all over again. And every restaurant you go to is not going to be very good. I mean, any place in the world, including in the United States, uh, I lived in North Carolina for a few years and uh, it was really hard to find good restaurants there. Good for me, I mean, and I, I know I'm particular, and I realize that, but that doesn't change the fact that I want what I want and I'm going to look until I find it. And so that's a search and it takes quite a while when you come to Cuenca. The food scene has changed dramatically. When I first came here, it was difficult to find good places to eat. There were good places to eat, but there were few and far between. And so if you just, you know, went to some place that was near where you lived, there's a good chance it wouldn't be very good. I put a lot of effort into locating things that made me happy. And, you know, I want to address this idea that all I do is eat hamburgers. Uh, and when people come here and they want to meet up, the first thing they say is, you know, let's, I'll buy you a hamburger. And the truth of it is, most of the time, I eat maybe a couple a month. I don't eat that many. It's just if I'm going to eat one, I want it to be exceptional. I don't want to eat a marginal hamburger. What's the point? I want it to be really good. And that brings me to another aspect of this. When it comes to food, there's really probably two kinds of people. 
the people that eat to survive, they don't really care what they're eating as long as they get the nutrition they need and the energy. Those people are be very content to having the two dollar, three dollar, four dollar Elmerzos, the lunches every day. That's fine. No judgment on it. But it's not me. I fall into the second category. If I'm going to eat, I want it to be good. I'd rather not eat than eat something trashy unless I get to the point where I'm starving and that would be a while. I've got these stores built up. So, um, so for me to find places that I'm happy with is quite an ordeal. And so I feel compelled to put it in the video because I know there'll be some people like that. Um, and so that's what it's there for. Uh, I eat local, I eat El Merzo's, I eat $3, $3.50 lunches now and then, but they bore me to tears. And while there are some good ones, most of them aren't very good. Despite what people say, they are not very healthy. Having a plate full of carbs with almost nothing else, with no vegetables, uh, you know, onions and radishes the size of a tablespoon, to me doesn't entail vegetables. I grew up eating more vegetables than anything else on the plate. I grew up a kind of a meat and potatoes person, but you could substitute that with rice, but a huge pile of rice, along with french fries, along with, you know, you get all of these carbohydrates, with virtually no vegetable and this little bitty thing of meat, it, it just, to me that's not healthy, it's not good, and that's why I don't have that many of the El Merzos. Maybe one a week. I mostly cook from home. And then I can be sure I get what I want. So I don't eat out that much, um, but I do occasionally, and when I do, I let you know about it. And with the hamburgers, I just took you along for the ride as I searched for good hamburgers. Let's talk about finding an apartment. And these are going to be common sense, and you probably know them, but I'm going to re-emphasize because if it's important somewhere, it's more important here. Location. But location is critical. And the reason I say it's more important here is because there's reasons beyond what you would normally experience and one being the dogs. I've mentioned that in a number of videos. Most of the neighborhoods around Cuenca experience a pretty bad dog problem. There are neighborhoods around Cuenca that don't really have those problems. I live in that neighborhood. But it took my third place to find a place that fit that bill. Um, they're out there, but you've got to look. And so when you're looking for an apartment, if you want to sleep, if you don't want to worry about dog bites and all the things that go along with it, ripping into your trash, I suggest you look for the areas that don't have the problem. And they say, well, why don't you tell me the areas? Well, the areas might only compri comprise a block or two. and um, it, that, and that's going to change what's available in that block or two. Maybe there's nothing available. Maybe something opens up and now it's available. You have to do your homework. You've got to get out and pound the pavement and find the place that suits you. Now, how do I know if there's dogs? Well, you know, you can look around the neighborhood. But my neighborhood, there's dogs during the day. They're not really out on the street. They're behind fences. And so you hear them during the day. At night, uh, they all quiet down. Uh, <clears throat> when I do the video, you'll hear dogs because I'm doing it during the day. But it's very quiet here at night. And so that, you've got to find that. Well, how do you know that if you're out looking for an apartment? Well, I would suggest that you either go back in the evening and hang out, walk up and down the street. May not be the best idea. See if you can arrange to sleep there overnight. Or at least stay there for a few hours. You can talk to the neighbors, but I wouldn't necessarily count on that information. Now, another thing about location. Uh, there's a tendency when people come to Cuenca or when they make a life move. When you choose a place, you choose it with a mind of this is my future. This is where I'm going to be. And I 
can't express to you how strongly I feel that's the wrong way to think. If it works out that way, that's all well and good, but I would not assume that at all. I would assume that I need a place to stay right now, and if I have to sign a year lease, which is typical here, then I'm going to be there for a year. Because when you move into an area, you move into a neighborhood, even if it's perfect when you first get there, things can change. Um, I mentioned the Patreon video about when I went to Hidon, the internet was fine and I checked it for a number of days before I actually got a place and I got the internet. And it wasn't but a few weeks when it just kind of went south and it never fully recovered. It was up and down, there was all kinds of problems and I lost a lot of clients, I lost money. <clears throat> it financially kind of put me backward. And so I couldn't really live there anymore as much as I loved it there. And there were other reasons as I've explained, but that's just one of the, one of the things that happened. Now, I wouldn't have known that. And, um, you know, you're there, you're stuck, you, so you work through your lease. What you think is perfect today may not be perfect in a week or a month, six months. You may decide that you hate your neighbors or maybe you have great neighbors, but then somebody new moves in and it's horrendous. Do not come with a mind that you're going to be there forever because most people don't stay in their first place. Most people move to another place. They learn more about the, the city. They learn more about uh, barrios, neighborhoods. They learn more about where they want to live. Now it seems like everybody gets this idea because everything they read and all the promotional things about Cuenca is in El Centro. And yes, there's these beautiful old churches and there's just it's it's an it's just a nice area and so they get this idea they want to live there but there's not many people that live there that want to stay there it's probably the most moved into and moved out of area in the city because as nice and and quaint as it is and nice to walk around and people watch and the markets and all of the things that are there that are there um, a lot of those things after the initial oh, wears off it just kind of gets old and annoying when you have a lot of traffic you have a lot of noise you have smoky buses and you've got the you know the bars the discos that are cranking their music and it, for a lot of people it turns out that that's really not the the life that they imagined and they move out it takes a while to learn where you will want to be and where you're going to be happy and you have to put effort into it you cannot sit back and get some real estate person to do that for you you've got to put effort into it because they're not going to know no matter how much you try to explain and while we're on real estate i'm going to warn you this and this is not for every single one but this is a huge problem. The gringo real estate people or the people doing real estate that are catering only to gringos. Um, in some cases, it's perfectly okay, okay, but in many cases, that's a huge warning sign. They're fleecing people, they're vultures. Which brings me to another point. Budget's going to be important. You say, well, rent's cheap, it's not important. Well, as I've said in a number of videos, cost of living isn't what it appears to be at first, and you find out that it becomes more inflated. And whatever you, you imagine that cost of living to be will be more down the road. This is what I suggest to you to give yourself a little cushion. Whatever you think you're going to pay for rent, whatever you have allocated in your budget, make sure that you pay less give yourself some cushion things happen and it's important to do that now some of these things may not make sense to you but it's the best advice i can give and over time you're going to find out that it was good advice um, i'd be surprised if you ultimately after six months or a year uh, 
do not consider this to be good advice. Um, I'm not selling real estate. There's nothing in it for me. So, um, yeah, I'm not going to lie to you about it. I have mentioned and I have promoted good people that I've run into that are not in that vulture category. There are good people here that will help you out. Uh, you do not pay a real estate person. Uh, what they do is they usually collect one month rent from the person renting, uh, which is obviously if a place is three fifty a month, but if a gringo vulture can get six hundred, there's more money going into their pocket. It's coming out of your pocket. You're, you know, not only giving them more than what the going rate would be, but you're stuck with it for the next year. Now you could say, well, $600 is cheap. You got to get away from that mindset. You don't live only on rent. You don't live only on $2 Almerzo's. There's a whole bunch of things that fit into that category. And I think I've covered it enough in the last uh, few months videos talking about it. There's no point in doing it now. So rent is what it is and you're living in this economy. And so you need to pay that if you're, if you go to San Francisco and the going rent for a two bedroom, two bathroom place, it's, it's $2,000. Would it matter to you if somebody tried to get you to rent that for $3,000? And would you be clueless enough to say, oh, okay, $3,000 sounds great. Why would you do that? I mean, you pay what the going rate is, right? You don't pay more, you don't pay less, you pay, you pay what it is. And if you have a budget of a certain amount, let's say you're coming here and you have a restricted income and you figured out what you think you're going to pay and all the utilities and, and you want to travel a little bit. So you figure that all out and you say, well, I can do that on $350 a month and I'm, I'll be great. Then try to find a place for 300. Give yourself that little extra cushion and you'll find it. Most places here, depending on the size, but you know, this house, this three story house with four bathrooms is $400. And if I was in another neighborhood, I could probably get it for three to 350. If you're, if you know about that market and that's just the local market and you're not talking to gringo, you talk to these gringo vultures and they say, oh, you're just being cheap and being cheap. It's the price. Why on earth would I just voluntarily decide to pay $200 a month more? I, why would I do that? If one of the advantages of being here, as a lot of people cro proclaim, a lot of these same gringo vultures, if the advantage is, oh, the cost of living is so great, then why ruin it? Why make it worse? Why not have something that's more reasonable? If you're looking for a one or two bedroom in a decent neighborhood, you can find those for a couple hundred dollars. Uh, you can find furnished for two, three hundred dollars. You don't have to pay five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars. Location, understand the economy, and set yourself a budget. Uh, get some good advice from somebody you trust that's here. Stay away from the gringo vultures. And that goes for uh, not just real estate, everything that you're going to need. There's a whole group of vultures for every category, whether it's to help you get a visa or tour guides, or there's a lot of good ones, but there's a lot of that. And so you need to stay away from those and stick with good people that aren't going to mess you over, take advantage of you. I'll see you soon. You know you could.